Well, I understand you have breaking news. What is it? Yeah, I was just looking at All right, so this is new. This is broken here. I don't think if it's it. Well, I know for a fact it's not been broken anywhere else. The Georgia State Senate has an investigation going on to the, into the Fulton District Attorney's Office. Uh, there's a committee that's, that's looking into this. Uh, today, they've issued a subpoena. They've issued a subpoena to Attorney Ashley Merchant for all of her text communications uh, related to this case. Um, I don't know more at this time, but I do know that that subpoena uh, is is out and that it's it's seeking these very things that we're talking about right now on this show. So there's obviously more to come. Other people are interested in this. This is getting the attention of the um, authorities, not only in the in the state senate, but there's there's ethics things going on here in Georgia. Fonnie Willis has a lot that she needs. She's going to have to be on defense for for uh, the foreseeable future. Uh, but suffice it to say, uh, the Senate is now seeking all of these uh, text communications to see if they can figure out what's going on. And of course, the court is not the only. Uh, entity that has an interest in this. As we've seen, we have lots of other government agencies uh, that have at least some dog in this fight in some particular way. The Senate, the uh, House of Representatives in Washington, D.C., Jim Jordan's committee, uh, he sent a subpoena to Fonnie Willis. So there's lots going on for her. And uh, like we have said, I don't know if it was yesterday or last week, the truth will come out one way or another. And here it comes. We're going to see the text messages, the legal headaches for Fannie Willis continue yep. to mount. This, The entire text message exchange between Ashley Merchant and Terrence Bradley, subpoenaed now by the Georgia State Senate, which is investigating Fannie Willis's behavior in this case. Where could that go? What power does the Georgia State Senate have over Fannie Willis or any of this? So they're obviously half of the state legislature, which has the capacity to make laws. They can... They can do laws that have to do with with ethics. They can do things that have to do with evidence. They can have do things that have to do with funding, quite frankly, of prosecutors' offices. And there's a big move in the Georgia legislature, you know, to have a an entity, an agency, if you will, that conducts oversight of prosecutors um, throughout the state of Georgia. They have one that's an oversight for uh, the judiciary. So there's a there's a push to to be able to do an oversight on prosecutors. They have uh, something that's already. Uh, it's something that already exists, but they're making changes and tweaks to it, uh, I think, in the current legislature. So they they can make laws, basically, that uh, can impact how not only Fonnie Willis, but other prosecutors are able to conduct themselves and run their offices in the future. Here's why, for the immediate purposes, this subpoena is significant. This document, with all the text exchanges, is not yet public. I'm sure the judge has seen it, which is, I'm sure, helpful to Ashley Merchant. But it's not yet public, and yet it's going to be. Because while there may be a confidentiality order in this case, the Georgia State Senate answers to the people and is going to have to make— there's nothing inherently confidential about this. This is not a lawyer-client communication. This is Ashley Merchant, lawyer for one of the defendants, communicating with Terrence Bradley, potential witness in the case. There's nothing that would protect this other than a protective order by this judge. And once the Georgia State Senate gets its hands on it, we're all going to see all of the texts in full between the two of them. Right now we have highlights, we have a couple of specifics, but I'm sure if you see the whole document front to back, it's going to put everything in context. And I guarantee you it's not going to make Terrence Bradley look like a guy who's sitting, speculating, reluctant to share. It's probably gonna show somebody who's very much in on the discussion and wants Ashley Merchant to have the accurate info for whatever reason about Nathan Wade. Yep. Uh, the uh, the the truth will, will come out. I, you know, I, we keep going back to that and I really don't know any other way to say it. Um, this the bigger picture here to me, Megan, is we need to figure out, you know, what was the impetus behind you know this prosecution in the first place? One of the key issues is, was it done for political reasons? Is this a case where you have uh, a Democrat politician using the vast power of her office as the district attorney. Is she using that to prosecute someone who's a political enemy? Uh, is Are there people in her office? Other, we, You had a guest on yesterday from Breitbart, and what they're looking at is whether or not there was, uh, you know, a political 
piece of of, of how this thing started and uh, is is this really a get Trump kind of a, a case? We've got to have prosecutors who are fair. You can't have prosecutors who single out individuals and target them because they don't like them or because they don't like their politics or they don't agree with how they tweet. Uh, you've got to have prosecutors who are fair-minded and objective. And this goes back to the motion to dismiss and disqualify that it's been litigated right now that we're talking about right now, because if Willis is part of that motion, let's not forget is that she is out uh, on TV, on the radio. She's making a, herself a star in the public mm -hmm. eye and she's doing it to benefit herself personally and professionally. That's the allegation. That's the claim in part of this motion. She hired a media a company to monitor her mentions. Yeah, she hired the media company. And so so this is all part of the the claim that, that this is so unfair for all of these reasons that the indictment itself is structurally unsound. And it's structurally unsound because it's not based on fundamental fairness as required by the due process I mean, look, clause. You need, you need look no further than I will say Jack Smith, who is definitely partisan and out to get Trump, however, is behaving him himself with respect to the public, like a normal prosecutor behaves yeah. when they're outward facing. He made one statement. It was what a minute long, maybe 90 seconds after one of the indictments. And then we never heard from him again. That is how a normal prosecutor handles crime where you're looking to put someone behind bars. She can't get herself in front of the cameras and the microphones enough. She wants to be a star. That's been clear from the beginning and it's come back to bite her in the you know what. I wanna get back before we take a quick break because I have other texts that I'm gonna show the audience. Um, but to that soundbite we played before your breaking news where she, Ashley Merchant and Gillum, he represents one of the other defendants, they are pointing out the absurdity of him. She's asking him, was there anything else inaccurate? Anything else? And he's like, no, looks good, looks good. Um, and now he wants to say, oh, I, I was only referring to that one footnote when I said looks good, that's it. And Gillum gets up there and says, you, you looked at this motion that you knew a lawyer for a defendant was about to file. This motion was called Defendant Michael Roman's motion to dismiss grand jury indictment as fatally defective and motion to disqualify the district attorney, her office, and the special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, and further pro from further prosecuting this matter. Do you remember seeing that? Yes. There wasn't anything in that title that threw you off. Pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Correct. You knew, you knew that the special prosecutor to whom she was referring was Mr. Wade, correct? Yes. And so now you tell me what credibility this guy has to look at the judge and say, oh, I, I, was, I thought I was only being asked if my one little footnote that I raised was accurate or not. The way I read, uh, when I read that text message uh, that you were just referring to, um, I interpret it to mean that he's telling Ms. Merchant that uh, the everything, you know, with, with maybe that one exception about uh, what he was referring to is accurate. And, and that would include the information about when the affair began. Uh, so that's how I took it. Uh, that's why it's offered as substantive evidence because the judge is not obligated to accept the testimony from the witness stand. He can go by the, by the text messages because if the text message confirms that, you know, the, the, relevant parts of her emotion, particularly about when the affair began and that kind of thing. If if he's confirming to her in the text messages that all that is accurate, the judge can use that as substantive evidence in the case, Megan, to to base his ruling. And, uh, you know, so that's that's what this is going to be about. And on Friday, you're going to see the lawyers arguing that point um, to the judge and hammering that mm -hmm. point so that uh, hopefully he relies on the prior statements versus the in-court statements. I don't know how he couldn't. I mean, Terrence Bradley was I obviously yeah. not, not telling the truth yesterday. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know it. And it was like any civilian could look at it. I guess CNN wasn't able to see it. Uh, but any nonpartisan hack can see what he was doing there. There's a lot more. Um, there is a question about, and I'm gonna take a break first, but there is a question about where's the prosecutor? Where's the lead prosecutor? Her name is Anna Cross, who had Terrence Bradley when, he was on the stand on Feb 16. She did the cross-examination. Suddenly, she's off the briefs, 
and might be off the case. Why? Discover a holistic wellness solution with Bond Charge, a brand dedicated to optimizing every aspect of your life. Grounded in science and inspired by nature, their evidence-based products cover a broad spectrum of premium wellness items. From enhancing sleep and performance to boosting energy, accelerating recovery, and balancing hormones, Bond Charge offers a diverse range of benefits. Consider the infrared sauna blanket from Bond Charge that they say can burn extra calories and detoxify. This innovative blanket elevates your heart rate, simulating the effects of physical exercise. Bond Charge says sweating during the process will help eliminate heavy metals and toxins from your body. Setting it up takes less than a minute and it rapidly heats up for a quick and convenient experience. For a limited time, save 15% by visiting bondcharge.com MK and use the coupon code MK. That's bond, B-O-N, charge, C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash MK and use the coupon code MK to save 15%. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.